When the Asset Browser was introduced a couple releases ago, we got a whole host of tools for asset management. Keywords, auto-updatable texture paths, and a whole lot more. Along with those tools though, came things like databases and database management. Things that no artist wants to deal with. So it was obvious that a more user-friendly approach was needed. And thankfully, with the 2023 release of Cinema 4D, we finally get this user-friendly workflow called Watch Folders. So what exactly are watch folders? I can show you in two seconds flat. It's super easy to demo. And that's it. It's basically defining a folder that Cinema 4D will check. If there are any compatible files there, it will display them in the asset browser. Which is perfect because that's mainly how most people build their libraries. They just have a folder full of models, textures, etc. So we no longer have to go through the time-consuming process of creating a database. From my understanding, Cinema 4D will still create a database to manage things internally, but we don't have to maintain it or do anything else ourselves. But we still get most of the benefits of an asset browser library. For example, adding keywords to make things easier to find. Once we have keywords assigned, we can just type in the keyword and we're good to go. And of course, if a file is added to that folder, Cinema 4D will automatically update and have that file accessible in a matter of seconds. Keep in mind though that there are some caveats. As good and as time-saving this workflow might be, it's not as flexible as building your own database. Let me show you what I mean. With the regular browser database, there is a distinction between an object and a scene, which makes things easier when we want to quickly add elements to our project. So here we have our object and we want to add a couple of elements on top. With a regular database, we can go to our library and pick the objects we want. A comb, a soap dish, and a toothbrush holder. It took me just a couple of seconds to do all that because the comb, the soap dish, and the toothbrush holder were saved as objects. We can see that in the details tab here. But with regular C4D files, there's no distinction there. So let's say that we want to add this cube to our scene. This is from a watch folder. We can confirm from the details tab that it's a regular scene file. If we now double click, the cube is not added to our scene. It just opens up as a new document. So now we have to copy and paste it into our scene. As you can imagine, if you have to do that with every single object we want to add, it will take a while. Which brings us to the second issue, texture handling. Since each watch folder might have its own text folder structure, we will end up with a ton of absolute path links. That means that we might run into some dependency issues at some point in the future. If we move a folder, or if the folder was on a network drive, and so on and so forth. One way to circumvent that issue is to build a folder structure with all of our C4D or RBJ files inside and one huge text folder with all the textures in them. But of course, that has its own set of issues because navigating a folder with thousands of files inside is not the most optimum way of doing things. And for some OSs or network drives, it might also be slow to navigate. As nice and uh, user-friendly watch folders might be, I think taking the time to build your own databases will be much more beneficial. But I can see the pros and cons for both sides. In the end, what matters is that we now have more than one way to manage our assets. So you can easily choose the way that suits you the most. But before diving headfirst into the watch folder way of doing things, I would advise you to experiment with both workflows and then deciding which way to go. And that is it from my side. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.